Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? Okay, I was trying to wait to get all this stuff done to go outside, but it's just getting later and later. It is 6.27 p.m. right now, and I'm like, if I don't start vlogging, it is gonna be so late. So, uh, I wanna vlog. Uh, and so, I wanna vlog. I wanna vlog, I wanna vlog. So I'm like, okay, let's just get this started now. And um, let's just forget sitting outside. We're gonna have to sit in front of the computer today because I have to tell you, Fridays are very slow days for people watching videos. And so when I woke up today, I was like, I, I, first of all, I did not fall asleep very easily last night. I went to bed and Boo Radley was being all kinds of rowdy last night. <laughs> he was jumping up in the bed and jumping off and jumping up and jumping off and jumping off. And I kept on like picking him up and putting him on the bed. Then he'd jump off and he'd jump back on. So finally, I took him outside like twice, did all this business, got him treats, brought him back up to the bed. Then he jumped down again. Then he was standing over me, just watching me. I was like, Boo Radley, what is going on? What do you want? Well, he had had enough sleep, I think is what it was. He was just like up. Cause then when he finally settled down, he just like laid right next to me. He was just like licking his paws. I was like, okay, please just go to sleep. So finally I fell asleep sometime, but it took me a long time to fall asleep. Um, because he was just like, so, um, what do you call it? Uh, just acting like the crazy man last night and stuff like that. So, so yeah, so that was last night. And, um, so when I got up today, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to even make any videos. I, I know I say this all the time. I was like, I don't even know if I'm going to make any videos other than, oh, my drama video just got done. Let me turn the volume down. I was like, I don't even know if I'm going to make any videos other than my vlog today. Cause I was like, at this point, where is it at? Why is it not showing up on here? Hold on a second. It's not showing in my, it says it was sent. <laughs> Why is it not showing in my camera? Oh, it's not showing, do I have to send it again? Okay. Oh, there, just show the, showed up. Okay, so, uh, is it there now? It's still not there now. Where is it at? Why is it not showing up? I have a song, I was just listening to this song. So you know I was watching Britain's Got Talent the other night. Actually, somebody commented on it, and they were like, oh, I love this performance, and I love that performance, and it was so funny, because I just watched like all these Britain's Got Talent performances. Somebody commented on it, and they listed like the ones that they liked. I was like, oh, I know all those performances, because I just like watched this. So for some reason, I don't know why, it must have dropped it or something, because it's not, the airdrop did not go through, so I'm gonna have to airdrop it again. This is why it's important that I'm sitting in front of the computer doing this. Uh, so anyway, when I got up today, I was like, oh, like Fridays are real slow days anyway, and people don't watch a lot of videos on Fridays, and so I was like, I'll just film my vlog. Well, then I had stuff, so I have a couple hauls that I wanna do on my Peter Does Stuff channel. I had all these like t-shirts and stuff, and then there was like some other stuff that I had gotten that I wanted to show, and I have all the Goose Creek candles in the garage. Well, I wanna use those. I wanna break them out and start using them. So um, I have two huge boxes of that. So I'm probably gonna do that one tomorrow or Sunday. And so I was like, okay, I need to like, I wanna start using some of this stuff and whatever, so I wanna show it in a video. So I did that. I literally sat here, Alex, um, he like had to go into work today for like a meeting and stuff like that. And then he had another meeting and then he went out to brunch with his friend. And so he got home. I didn't even get started making videos till probably 3, 30, 4 o'clock. And it's now 6, 30, maybe, maybe 3 o'clock, something like that. Um, I don't know what time, he, do you know what time you got home, babe? No. No? <laughs> what? 3.30. 3.30, so it was about the time that he got home and I started filming videos. So 3.30ish, something like that. And so I literally sat down here and I did the, um, I did the haul for my Peter Does Stuff channel. And then I've been working on the basement last night, which I'll talk to you about in just a second. And so, which I'll talk to you about in just a second. I'll tell you about in just a second. So I had like found this stuff that I had bought for my review channel that I had never reviewed. And I like kind of like found it like at different times to keep on setting the box aside. And so Alex is trying on outfits for Ultra Music Festival. This is a new outfit. Oh, oh my. <laughs> Are you going to show that on camera? Nope. <laughs> it's a mesh shirt and it seems to have some glitter detail to it. Um, you don't like it? Festival shirts. Um, well, I just saw you as you were passing by. Let me see. Give the people your reaction. Uh, no, I don't care for it. Mm -mm. Did you get that from Wish? 
wish. <laughs> Did you get it from ASOS? No. What do you think of it? It only matters what you think. I think that this is not an outfit that I would wear. No, it's not an outfit you would wear. I like the other shirts that you had on better with those shorts, though. Are those like leather or are they pleather shorts? Oh, uh, pleather. I like those shorts, though. Um... He's trying on outfits because he ordered a bunch of stuff from ASOS, so he's trying all these outfits that he got. Okay, now let's see if this works this time. Oh, there it is. So, I was like, I want to show this stuff in a review haul video to see if um, people are interested in this at all. Hold on just a second. See if people are interested at all in this stuff that I have. They still want me to review it or not. Because I thought I'll leave it up to the people. Is this a new outfit? I think this one's more your speed. Is that not the same shirt? That's the exact same shirt, it's just a crop top. No, uh-uh. That is horrible. Did you really order that online? Yeah. What were you thinking? I'm thinking that this would go under a shirt so you only see this part. Okay, but that would be the same thing as the other shirt. No. Do you know what's funny though about that is? I actually like that one better than the other one. <laughs> it's like this black mesh and it's like glittery. He's laughing because he doesn't like them either. Alex always orders all this stuff from, you always order all this stuff from ASOS and then you return all of it. Well, yeah. He's so good about returning stuff. Like, I don't ever return stuff. I'm bad about it. But he returns everything. I'm always like, oh, I'll wear it sometime. So anyway, um, and then after that, I wanted to do, I haven't like been doing videos on my reality TV channel. And so it was like, we just watched Traders last night. I was like, okay, I want to do my Traders reaction. So I did my Traders reaction and then I filmed a Peterism's video. I was like, I can't believe I filmed four videos. Well, my phone was going off while I was doing all of that. I was like, who is texting me? I was getting all these texts. And it was about this video that James Charles put up. So I watched this video, James Charles getting high. So getting high and doing his makeup. So I watched this video, James Charles, and then I was like, drama videos don't do great on Fridays unless it's like some huge explosive story. And I was like, uh, okay, well, I'll film something because I don't know if I want to film Saturday and Sunday. Tomorrow night we have a birthday dinner that we're going to. And so I don't know like how much I'll be able to get done tomorrow or how much I'll even want to get done tomorrow. So I was like, and Sundays I, you know, take off sometime. Although I have to tell you, it's interesting um, for the person out there that says that I rest a lot and I take a lot of breaks. Uh, just to put a little side note in there. I actually, look, this is my 10th vlog in a row that I've done. Um, I've consistently worked 10 days in a row. But no, interestingly enough, I was kind of looking at this because I was like, you know, I get comments here and there. Well, actually, just all from one person that has a real issue with the fact that apparently I rest too much. <laughs> I, I rest way too much. I just addressed this on my drama channel, so in case you missed that, um, I um, get to get up every single day and do something that I love, which is film videos and interact with you guys. And then I get to spend the day with my dog and the evenings with my husband and my best friend watching shows and going to meetings and drinking coffee. And we get to travel places and I get to order things online and listen to audiobooks and watch movies and true crime. Like I have an amazing life, right? Like, and if you call that resting, then I should be teaching people how to rest because I have an amazing life. I'm not going to defend it, but I think it's funny. But I looked and I was like, um, oh, here, we're doing another outfit. It will be like this. I think you should come over here and let everybody judge and see what you think. But I'm gonna cut, I think I should cut the sleeves. Okay, I'll stop interrupting you. I like that shirt, that black shirt on top of it. That's cute. Is that an older shirt of yours or is that new? Old. I like it. Oh, and look who's looking down the stairs, little Boo Radley. Um, somebody asked in the video if, uh, Alex will love this when I say this. They said, do you think that Boo Radley is lethargic because he misses Alex during the day? Somebody said that, babe. It's true. It is true, probably. No, Alex is lethargic. I've talked to Tani about this, and she's like, Peter, all dogs are lethargic. She was like, at the kennel, she was like, dogs sleep all the time. She was like, puppies sleep really more than any dogs, you know? I th he's just lethargic because he's an older dog. You know, I think that's part of kind of what's hard for me with it, is that like, when I started making YouTube videos, like, <laughs> he's shitting me up the stairs like this. When I started making videos, you know, PP would be in all the videos and stuff with me, but towards the end, 
before PP passed away, he would like just go on the bed and lay down. He wouldn't even come downstairs. Tucker was the same way, and then Tucker would start sleeping on the stairs, like on the stairs. He would just lay down there. Boo Radley is not like that. Boo Radley is still like running around and whatever. Like some days he lays down. It, honest to God, I think it has a lot to do with the weather. I think it has, but he wants us upstairs in bed all the time. Like last night we watched Vanderpump Rules, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion, Real Housewives of Miami reunion, Traders finale, Traders reunion. We watched five shows back to back. Do we watch anything else? No. We watched those back to back and Boo Rowley the whole time just did laps. He like went upstairs and laid down. At one point, like Alex went upstairs and put him in bed. We took him out multiple times. He had treats. He had food. He finally had his medicine. And he just wants us up in bed all the time. What do you think? What's your theory on why he wants us up in the bedroom all the time? Comfortable. Comfort. Comfort. He said he's comfortable. He just loves the bed. Which is what was so crazy because then finally when I went to bed last night, because when Alex went to sleep, um, well, I did a bunch of stuff. And then when I finally settled down to watch the show last night, I watched Survivor and then I watched this true crime series that I'm watching called Under the Friday Night Lights. They are all so tragic and sad. The one I watched last night, I finished the first season. The last episode is about this guy from California and he is this black football star that is from this part of, I can't remember what the city is called. It's, oh, it's Costa County, Costa something county and the only reason i remember that is because that was in i'll be gone in the dark because that was one of the counties where the golden state killer like attacked women and um contra costa county or something like that but anyway the town they lived in i kept on thinking of virginia richmond california and so richmond apparently is like split with like a lot of gang activity and so this guy, like, his grandmother and his dad, like, his dad worked, like, three jobs, and they sent him and his cousins to these private, this private school, which was, like, the number one football school, like, high school in the country. Like, they had, like, a winning streak of, like, a hundred and so many games or whatever. It was interesting because when you watch these other shows, it'll, like, interview, like, the head coach, and the head coach will have been the head coach for, like, five years. This guy that they interviewed at this DeSalle, DeSalle High School in California, he had been the head coach from 1979 to 2013. I mean, he had been, like, forever. All these coaches that were there that worked for the football team, they had been there for, like, long periods of time. But anyway, it was so sad. He, um, so he had gotten recruited by the University of Oregon and was going to University of Oregon. And they, there was a lot of talk about, like, to get out, like, a lot of, like, a, a lot of these like kids like their only way out was academically or athletically and that was their opportunity and that their families were excited because like if they went and played college ball and then got like recruited into the, the NFL you know drafted in the NFL then like they brought their families along with it so it was like all for their families as well and so their families worked hard to support them and this guy was like his name was um, they called him TK. His name was Terrence Kelly. And he was this really good guy, really nice guy, and um, fantastic football player and all this kind of stuff. Well, two he had gone to Oregon for the whole summer to train for football. And then he came back and he was back for just a few days. And it was like two days before he was supposed to leave to go to school, to go to college in the fall for his freshman year. And he was shot and killed. And it is, so, the story is so tragic. So I watched that one last night. Well, when I was watching it, Boo Rowley came down here. He kept on running around. I took him out then, went upstairs after I got done watching that. And um, he was uh, just like jumping up and down and off the bed. I don't even know why I'm talking about that. So anyway, actually, while I'm sitting here, I need to kind of like look at these videos and see if... What did Valerie just text to me? She asked me if I saw something. <laughs> no, I didn't. She said he he at the end of it. She sent me something on Instagram. She's like, did you see it? I was like, no. Um, so anyway, last night we watched all the shows and then, well, I walked last night. How long did I walk for? I think I only walked for like 40 minutes last night. So I wanted to, I wasn't going to walk because my leg was hurting. I ended up buying a knee brace. I showed that in my video today on my Peter Dusto channel because Alex sent me this. You guys, some of you had recommended it to me and then Alex 
he sent me this link to one that he saw on Amazon. So I bought it last, actually I bought it last night and it came this morning. Last night I walked for 40 minutes and, um, cause we wanted to watch our shows and stuff like that. Oh, here are my meditation books. I haven't put away yet. I need to do that when I get done. So anyway, I, um, so I walked last night for 40 minutes and then I came back and I took a quick shower and then we sat down and we, um, ate dinner and we watched our shows and then Alex went to sleep at like, it was like 1 30 or something like that. And then I wanted to, mm, I had like 20 minutes left, 25 minutes left of that Lisa Jewell book because I, you know, walked and listened to most of it. I was listening to it all day yesterday. None of this is true. That book is so fantastic. It is one of the best thrillers I've ever listened to in my entire life. It is so good. I'm gonna, and thank you guys so much for the recommendations of the other Lisa Jewell books in the comment section below because I'm going to go in and get those. So I finished that last night and um, I was like, I'm going to sit out here and I'm going to end up watching because it was like cool, but it wasn't super cold last night. It was kind of rainy and stuff. And I was like, I'm going to sit out here and I'm going to watch all these American Idols again. I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm going to watch this true crime and stuff. So I came in here and I went down in the basement. Oh, I was doing laundry. <clears throat> I was watching, washing like some sweatshirts and stuff that I had worn the last couple days and sweatpants. And then I was doing like a load of towels. And so I was like changing it over. And while I was down there, I went to go look for something. Okay, so I'm finishing up as like, I had like the last 10 minutes of this Lisa Jewell book and like came in from outside so I'm sitting there and I start looking through something and like I, all these boxes, right? And like I'll go through a box and I'll save and whatever. And I'm like, for some reason this week, I don't know why I'm like in this, just I can just get rid of stuff. It's like, there's some days that I can get rid of stuff easier than others. And so I was going through this box last night. Hold on a second, let me pull this screen up here cause this will be better as far as like the lighting. I was going through this box last night. I started like looking through this stuff. Oh, is the review stuff. And I was like, I have, so we have used these smaller white trash bags that we get from Costco for like our trash bag underneath our sink. Cause our trash bag in our kitchen is real, our trash can is real small. It's like this big underneath our sink. And so we have these big trash bags that like when I get rid of stuff and whatever. And so I was like, where's that box of trash bags? So I came up here, we have a new one, I think in the garage of these bags. And then I went and got the old one, which had like four bags, four or five bags in it. I sat down in the basement last night. I finished that book. I started The Firm and I listened to like two hours of it. And I like manically cleaned that basement last night. I got rid of so much stuff and like stuff that I already had like gone through and thought I was going to keep. I like went through a bunch of stuff. And so half of the basement is pretty much done now. It just has to be like pushed into like, so we've got like some tables and some furniture and stuff there that's like old and dated that just needs to be like donated and taken away. So, and like an old Christmas tree is down there and some rugs and stuff that are rolled up. So I'm pushing them like all into this corner and then like half the basement's done. Like all the books need to be like taken out and whatever. Then what's left is CDs, VCR tapes, DVD tapes, pictures, memories, and all my high school stuff. That like all my writing and high school and notes and years, yearbooks and stuff like that. So that's what's left, which that part over there looks like a complete mess. But I honestly think listening to some audiobooks and going through it, it won't take me that long. I just showed Alex the basement. What'd you, were you surprised? He said, yeah, it looks great. Can you say it louder? It looks great. It looks great. Um, so yeah, so I did that last night. Here's the thing that I'm finding. So, like I was going through this stuff last night. I had like this big box of stuffed animals. And these were, these were stuffed animals that, like I'd, like I'd gone through a lot of stuffed animals and gotten rid of a lot of them. These were literally like the last few, like the last 10 or 20 that reminded me, like, I, like stuffed animals meant a lot to me when I was a kid. And these were like the last 10 or 20 that like I remember their names and they meant stuff to me and stuff, right? So I, I'm going through this box because it's all of it just taking up space. And um, like a lot of them, because they're so old at this point, had started kind of like seeping apart and like their insides were coming out. Like a lot of them was like sawdust, like insides and stuff. So I was just like, you need to just get rid of these. Well, I was having a hard time getting rid of them. I always have like an emotional attachment, you know, to this stuff. And so I think I've showed this in videos, but I, when, when I was born, a friend of my grandma's, my mom's mom, crocheted me these two stuffed animals and one was called 
uh, Mrs. Blue, and the other one was called, because she's blue and she's puffy and fat, and the other one's called Yellow Dog. Yellow Dog was who I carried all the time, and actually we lost Yellow Dog outside of church. My dad went back there a week later. It was like in this drain, like drain ditch thing, like, and he like got it out of there and saved Yellow Dog. All the stuffing was gone from it, and like I carried, like before the ace bandage, I would like, like I called it, you know, my ace bandage is the edgies. And so I would like edge with this, like the ear of Yellow Dog. Yellow Dog is upstairs in the drawer. And like Yellow Dog and JoJo, which is like this, it's so stupid when I even say all this. Yellow Dog and JoJo, which is a stuffed animal that I got at a yard sale with my mom when I was a kid. Those are like the only two that I've kept upstairs. Well, well I'm going through the thing and I, Mrs. Blue's in there. Well, Mrs. Blue, the story of Mrs. Blue is really more about the story. I never really had an attachment to Mrs. Blue. So I go over because I have this like bookcase down there where I'm saving like minimal, minimal children's books and stuff like that. Like, I mean, I'm talking like less than five or 10. Because I'm trying to like, okay, Peter, like if you don't have any attachment to this and you're never going to pull it out and look at it, get rid of it, right? So I put Mrs. Blue over there and I'm standing there looking at it and I'm like, you're never going to pull out Mrs. Blue and look at her. Just throw her, just get rid of her. And she's old and she's musty smelling, no kid wants her and stuff like that, right? So I'm just like bagging up, all, all these stuffed animals are literally like I'm pulling them out and they're just falling apart in my hands. So I'm going through this stuff and then I had a box of like all my mom's like high school yearbooks and all this stuff. Oh, by the way, I want to say something because it'll probably be happening in this video today. Maybe not because I was rendering videos the other day. But Tia noticed there was like a humming sound in it. And I've noticed that sometimes when I watch videos back, the humming sound that you hear is coming from the computer. I don't hear it. It's so low that I don't hear it when I'm filming. That's one of the reasons why I don't like to film inside. It usually only happens when I'm rendering a video and I'm not rendering a video right now. I'm just uploading videos. So it shouldn't be bad today, but I just want to say I apologize for that. But that's like where the humming sound comes from. Because Tia mentioned it and somebody else said that they heard it too. And I'm, I like, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of it, but I don't hear it when I'm talking because I like I'm talking over the sound. So if you guys hear it, like I apologize for that. So like it's so dark outside now. I don't know if you guys can see like our... Well, hi, Boo Radley. Well, you can't see really with our windows because of the lights in here, but um, it's so dark outside that I didn't want to have to like sit outside in the dark and it's like raining tonight and stuff. So anyway, here's part of the problem. So I'm going through my mom's like yearbook stuff and like her dolls from when she was a kid. And I'm thinking about Caroline. Like Caroline literally like threw all that stuff out like when her mom passed away. And I'm like looking at all this stuff. This is stuff like I've gone through already and now I've saved some of this stuff. And I'm just like, okay, these dolls are not worth anything. You need to get rid of them. So I get rid of the dolls. I'm looking through all this kind of stuff. I actually, I was looking for, this was like this huge box that had all these yearbooks in it and stuff. I, for the life of me, I can't throw my mom's yearbooks out. Not yet. I don't know what it is, but here's the thing. It's like, you know, this is what goes through my head when I'm looking through this stuff. And this really helped me last night because I got rid of so much stuff. Well, actually, I found the Demi Toss cups. I think that's what they're called for like espressos. My mom had those because we used to have an espresso machine in our house, like an old authentic espresso machine. And so she had all these like, I think that's what they're called, but they're like the cups and saucers. And so I, I thought I had only kept one of each, but I guess I kept two of each. And so I did save those. And I had like taken some stuff from my aunt's house. Um, well, hi, honey. You want to come over here and say hi? Oh, no, he's just doing laps. Okay. So I kept a couple things from my aunt's house. But, like, I kept her crock pot because it, like, meant something to me as, like, chili and all that kind of stuff. I will say this, so I think I'm going to do this. So I have, like, a crock pot in there, and I have some other things that were, like, really meaningful to my aunt. And Caroline's son is, like, looking at houses and stuff like that with his girlfriend. So, like, as a moving-in gift, I might save... Because that would, like, David is very similar to me when it comes to, like, memories and emotions and stuff like that. Do you want to come say hi? Huh? Come here. Well, sweetie, you're standing right behind me. I can't get to you. Nope. Oh, okay. Um, and so, he's very similar to me in that way. And so, I was like, maybe I'll just, like, save that crock pot for him. But I don't know. Like, I'm trying to, like... I was like, I, when I was going through stuff, I was like, oh, maybe my nephews would like this. And I was like, they're not going to just get rid of it. They had this like snow globe and I was like, just get rid of the snow globe. It's like old. It doesn't even work anymore and stuff like that. The thing is, here's the deal, right? Like Caroline doesn't want any of this stuff. Okay. My dad doesn't have any emotional attachment to it. My stepmom definitely doesn't. And then my nephews from Carlos and Liliana, they don't have any attachment to my mom, so they don't even know her. Alex doesn't have any attachment to it. 
David is really the only one that would, that remembers my mom, but I don't think he wants your books and stuff of my mom. So then I have all this stuff from my mom, right? And the thing is, is like, what do I do? Like, just put it in a box in case I want it, and then say, when I'm gone, pitch it. Like, I mean, I don't know. Like, I have a lot of that kind of stuff, right? That would, like, have no meaning to anybody. And the thing is, is that I don't know that, like, this is going to sound so arrogant, but I don't know that someday I won't want to, like, tell the story of my life. So, it's not a lot. Like, it's literally, like, all just in, like, one plastic box. But, like, getting rid of, like, my high school notes and stuff like that, like, I have a hard time doing that because I'm like, these are things that I might, so I'm not getting rid of those stuff yet. But, like, the CDs, at this point, it's like, I haven't listened to a CD it's two cars ago. I don't even think I had a CD player in my last car. So what was it? Two, three cars ago? So it's been like 12 years since I've even listened to a CD at all. So it's like the CDs just need to go. The tape cassettes, they probably need to go too. I haven't listened to a tape cassette in forever. I mean, all this stuff in the basement. The albums, I'm going to go through the record albums and the ones I want to keep, I'm going to keep. And the ones I'm going to go, I'm just going to donate the rest of them with the books. And then the DVDs can go with the books. The CDs can go with the books. It just needs to all go. And that was kind of where I was at last night men mentally and where I've been this last week. It's like, <clears throat> if I haven't looked at this stuff in forever, it just needs to go. It just needs to go. So, got a lot of the basement done last night and th this, this week. <clears throat> I actually left the basement last night. I kept on like looking at it because, you know, I did it the other day with the books. And I was like, I have done a lot down here. But I was like, I can't spend two to three hours a night every single night down here. It's a lot. I just can't. Um, there was just something that I realized that I wanted to look at real quick. Okay, so I did this drama video and then like at halfway, the halfway mark, cause I'm uploading it right now. It's actually processing it. It's processing. I like halfway through this video, I like got up out of the chair and I'm gonna see if it's like real noticeable. Cause I like threw my fan by accident and I had to go get it. Oh, here it is. Turn the volume down. I have to make sure I don't give like a butt crack <laughs> view or something like that. No, but it's not a good picture of me. Oh well, who cares, right? I like try to like throw my fan and pick it up and it like went. <laughs> I'm so stupid. Okay. Okay. Just wanted to check that. My drama video is actually uploaded. <clears throat> so the last video that I have to. Is it done? Is the processing done? Yeah, so the last video that I have to upload over here is my reality TV video. Dream. Why did I screenshot this person's? I swear to God, I have so many screenshots in my phone. Of the I, I go through there and I like, look at like two years ago and I'm like, why did I even screenshot this? And it's like some random like Instagram comment that somebody left on like <laughs> Jeffree Star's Instagram or Jack Lindell's Instagram. I'm like, why did I even keep that? Oh, this is the one thing I wanted to say about the people that take issue with me resting. Hold on, I got the light back on. There's not people. I think it's a person that takes an issue with me resting. I'm so proud of you for being so productive and that you only shout out your accomplishments. You should be really proud. By the way, I just want you to know that your comments come across as very passive aggressive and it obviously doesn't make you happy to watch my channel, but you keep on watching anyway. Smooches. Okay, so I'm saying smooches because that's what they said back to somebody else that thought that their comment was not very kind. Their response to that was smooches. So smooches to you too. Your comments that you've left on my videos are not very kind either. You've actually left several comments about the fact that I rest more than anybody that you've ever known. I actually looked on here to see and I at my video. So if you go to the top of your any YouTube channel, it'll tell you how many videos there are. And so I have made 2.4 thousand vlogs. There's 2.4 thousand vlogs on here. So if I ever take off a day, there's 2,400 vlogs that you can go find, right? 
But I actually went in and I'm like, okay, so I've been vlogging for seven years and two months, right? And so that comes out to 86 months. If you divide 2,400 by 86 months, it actually comes to 27.9 vlogs a month, okay? Not to mention that I took three months off after the accident, and I took a month off after pancreatitis and a week off after PP passed away. Now, since the accident, I've taken off a day here and a day there, right? But what's interesting about this is to the person or a one or two or three out there that have issues with me taking breaks or whatever because the majority of you out there are like Peter take a day you deserve a day take a day right the fact that I'm filming um, or have filmed in my entirety on this channel 27.9 which is actually let's just say 28 vlogs a month and there are between 30 and 31 the camera stopped the battery stopped and there are between 30 and 31 days in most months obviously means that I'm taking off a day or two a month how many days do you take off from your job Oh, by the way, I have multiple channels that I film on several times a day, and I don't think it really matters whether I edit it or not. I'm still putting those things up there. <laughs> Most YouTubers that you guys watch out there, they don't edit their own videos. I know that's probably a surprise to you, but they don't. Most huge video people out there, they pay somebody. They literally sit here and they don't do anything different than I do, and they pay somebody to send their videos off and edit them. They're not sitting there doing it themselves and things like that. I, I, and so when people say to me, you don't edit your videos, I'm like, yeah, nobody else does either. <laughs> like, unless you're on my level, like nobody, if, if you're at like, let's say four or 500,000 and above, most YouTubers have editors that send their videos. I cannot tell you how many emails I get constantly from people out there that don't even know my channel. And they'll be like, hey, I'm like an editor and a videographer and I edit this person's videos and this person, they tell me who they edit, right? And they're like, and this is what I charge per video. Would you be interested in my services? Delete, I always delete them, right? I don't need fancy editing in there. But, um, you know, apparently, apparently I can't take a nap. <laughs> you know, apparently I can't rest. <laughs> so I just wanted to say that out there. Cause, but that was actually really more for me because I do feel bad sometimes. I'm like, I don't ever like, like if I take a day or two off from vlogging, I'm like, oh my God, like I don't want to take a day or two off. Like it's been a lot. And like, then I looked last night cause I was like, am I really taking that much time off from vlogging? Like maybe, like maybe I'm like, not sure about really what is going on, right? And I looked and I was like, you, this is your 10th vlog, like tomorrow will be your 10th vlog in a row. Like you've filmed for 10 days in a, in a row, right? Like, and, uh, and I, and you know, the thing is, is before PP passed away, I think like this is kind of forgotten sometimes. So PP passed away December of 2019. Before then, I, there was never a day that I missed. I vlogged every single day. And most of those vlogs were like an hour and a half, you know? So, just a little side note out there, in case I want to take a day off here and there. Oh, look, I had a surrender definition pulled up and all this kind of stuff. Okay, let's get to upload complete processing. Okay, that's on my Peter Does Stuff video. Let's go over here to my, oh, look at this. My review haul video is done. You guys can be right here as I post it. Okay. Dream. I don't know what we're gonna do tonight. We've got the swans to watch, and we're gonna watch RuPaul's Drag Race. Why did it just like do that? Just like stop for some reason. Um, and then tomorrow night, do you be playing during the day tomorrow, babe? Uh, possibly. Okay, well don't, <laughs> possibly means it's like with a front that he can't say online. Oh, is it like going over to somebody's house? Maybe. Okay. So, um, to, to see somebody new? What? Is it who you were supposed to see today, maybe at the mall? Sure. And then tomorrow night we have dinner. And I think you said dinner is at what, 6.30? We have to leave here? Huh? So that'll be fun tomorrow night. And then the rest... It's history. The rest is, what's the word, word I'm looking for? We should look at most profound quotes. Was it yesterday is history and tomorrow is a mystery? Oh, here it is. And tomorrow is a mystery. It just came up. Oh my God, this is so funny. Who said yesterday is a history, tomorrow is a mystery? Do you guys know? 
Eleanor Roosevelt said it. Yesterday is a history, tomorrow a mystery, today is a gift. What did I say in my video yesterday about meditation? What did I say? Meditation? I don't know what I said, but anyway, let's look at most profound quotes. Seven most profound quotes that inspire that inspire oh wait, wait wait what is the most profound the po most powerful quote ever who decides these things the most powerful quote ever courage is not having the strength to go on it's going on when you don't have the strength that was theodore roosevelt life isn't as serious as the mind makes it out to be eckhart tolle and i say all the time in videos it's not that serious people make fun of me for saying that see one day my quote's gonna be up here success is going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm Winston Churchill. What was the thing I said the other day that I was like, oh, I bet somebody else has said that. Meditation. Meditation is medication. I bet somebody's already said that. Meditation is medication. Is that a quote? Quote. Meme. Meditation is the ultimate medicine because it connects you to the full potential of your soul. I can't pronounce this person's name. They're a yoga instructor. I guess they're the ones that said it. But nobody said meditation is medication. Instead of medication, try meditation. Meditation is the best medication. Mindfulness meditation is effective as medication. Well, I don't know about all that. I think... There's some things that medication can't help with. But that's just my personal opinion. Okay. That's probably also a medical profession, but not my medical profession. Or medical professional opinion, but not my medical professional opinion. Because you know what? I'm not a medical professional. What was I just uploading on here? I thought I was uploading my... Hold on a second. Hey, little thing, let me light your candy because I'm, I'm, I'm sure hard to handle now. Okay, did I already upload my reality TV video? Or do I need to do that next? No, I haven't done that yet. Okay. Hey, little thing, let me light your candy because I'm, I'm, I'm. <sighs> This is where Valerie gets so upset because she's like, oh, here it is, the Traders finale. You need to stop working while you're vlogging. <laughs> Sorry, Valerini. Cheers, Valerini. Why don't you get in your car and come drive down here and pick me up and we'll go to the casino <laughs> since it's been since September. Well, Shay, what'd you leave me on Instagram? Now I want to know what she left me on Instagram. That was so funny. Okay. Um, oh, here, I'm keeping a list right here. See, I have this list of my videos that I filmed. Okay, so that, my Peterisms one's uploaded. My drama one's uploaded. I posted my review, didn't I? My review video is posted. My uh, Peter Does Stuff video is uploading. So after I get done vlogging this, I will just go in and I'll get those other videos done and then that will be it. That will be the spice of life. I think I need some lip gloss. So yeah, I started the firm last night. I'm like, like six, less than six hours left. It's 17 hours total. But you know, I listen to it at like two times five speed or two times, I think I'm listening to it at two times four speed or two, maybe two times five speed. Seems even slow listening to it then. I like it, but what I forgot about John Grisham's books is that like the story is good and it's built really well, but that it's very kind of like the char characters are kind of generic and things like that. Camino Island and those were good too. Remember I read those a couple years ago and I liked the second one to that, but they were very similar to that. So, but like I'm only um, like two hours into the firm or an hour listening to it. They just moved. He like just started at the firm is where I'm at in it. So, so yeah, so I'm gonna listen to some more of that tonight. I don't know if I'm gonna take a walk because it's kind of raining right now and it's getting a little bit late, but I walked real late the other night. Um, I just don't know that I'm going to. I don't know that it would kill me to 
take a uh, a break from walking for a day. But my but I kind of want to listen to my audiobook. Okay. Now my review video is uploading or my trainer's video is uploading. Let's go and see where we are on this other video that was getting done. It's processing. So that's where we're at. What else? Oh, you know what? Somebody commented and then I don't remember who commented. I'm sorry, but I, but I noticed that Tia commented back on it too. Somebody commented and said, they were talking about me talking about my mom and my mom being like an active alcoholic and you know, all this other kind of stuff and whatever. I won't get into all that, those details, but they said that they appreciated the fact that like, that wasn't the only, basically the sentiment was that they appreciated that that wasn't the fact that that was the only thing that I remembered about my mom, you know? And then Tia responded and kind of shared some, something personal as well. You know, the thing is this, is that I've had a lot of friends of mine who, and I've shared this on here before too, right? That like their parents died like actively using, like they never saw their parents get sober or their parents died when they were at, like when my friends were actively using, like their parents never got to see them get sober, right? And so that was the condition of the relationship when they passed away. I don't know. First of all, I think me getting sober gave me a completely different perspective, you know, and just like the last couple years, I share this on here, but this is like a prayer for, the, a prayer that my um, sponsor told me is to say, prayer for the sick man. Um, and it's really, really powerful to me. And it says, God, when a person offends me, help me remember this is a sick person. Help me show the same tolerance, pity, and patience that we would cheerfully grant a sick friend. Show me how I can help them. Save me from being angry. And that prayer really helped me so much because, and it's a recovery prayer. It really helped me so much because what it helped me see is that people that are like negative and hateful and miserable out there, right? Like, or people that have like, and I'm, don't want to bring like mental health and stuff into that obviously but i think to some degree it's like we look at that in a different way as we look at other illnesses and sicknesses right when it's all the same thing and so it makes you look at it for a different perspective and maybe see that person a little bit more compassionately i don't think had i gotten sober you would hear the same history i don't think if i had gotten sober and my mother had gotten sober you would hear the same history let's just say if i had never gotten sober and my mother never got sober i don't think my story of my childhood would look the same way maybe but i don't know because i wouldn't i can't walk i mean i didn't walk in those shoes right i think the fact that i got sober gave me a different perspective of my childhood and i think it also makes me realize my mom was on her own you know sickness and with dealing with mental sickness of her addiction dealing with mental health issues going through a horrible divorce at a time when people weren't getting divorced that she was a very troubled person and she did the best that she could you know what i mean and so and, and the reality is it's it would be very easy to pick or to paint a very negative picture you know and just focus on those things but my mother also like painted it or made a very magical child for me at, childhood for me at times you know um the thing is in all honesty when i look at my childhood the magical or the content moments of like i think about sundays after church right like those were not moments that my mother was like wasted drunk like she was making sunday dinner and we were having tuna fish salad sandwiches and bowls of chicken noodle soup on the porch while i read cartoons and stuff like she wasn't drunk in those moments like those are very just but they're not magical moments they're just content moments right mm -hmm. You know, of us watching cartoon or watching movies or, you know, Love Boat and Fantasy Island and, you know, like she would crush up ice and we would make like fountain pops in the kitchen or stuff like that or make milkshakes. Like those were like, but the reality is that the majority of the moments that I had with my mom in my childhood were good. It was those huge moments that are so like huge in my memory that kind of overshadow a lot of that. But I would say 85% of my childhood was really good, you know? Um, and then I would say high school was really when my mom's drinking like got the worst, like where I realized it. And I was also gone a lot with like my friends and doing stuff. So when I was gone, she was like, if I wasn't at my dad's house for the weekend, I was gone with my friends after school. So she was alone all the time. And 
I, I, she just was very depressed and drinking a lot. And she was working a job she hated. She was working a lot of retail at that time. And she wasn't teaching. And so she just was like a mess. And we were like arguing a lot. But I also, even in that moment, like I was still sympathetic. Like I realized like, I always kind of knew like, I don't know how, like this is where like children know more than we think they do, right? Like, I always knew my mom was very troubled, whether it was from stuff that happened to her in her past or she had mental health issues. I didn't know, I didn't know the words to use to describe it, but I always knew that that was the case. And I knew that the drinking was like how she dealt with it. You know, when you're like eight years old and you see your mom, you know, sitting in this chair in Ottoman in the library with her headphones on, drinking one glass of a wine after another, smoking one cigarette after another, listening to Bob Dylan and Judy Collins crying your eyes out, and after a phone call that she had with your dad, it's not hard to connect that the drinking and the music and the escape is to deal with whatever happened on that phone call. You know what I mean? Like, it's not hard to figure that out as a kid. Um, but I think, you know... Me getting sober allowed me to be of a healthier state of mind, to have compassion for who my mother was when she was in her own active addiction and obviously when she was dealing with her mental health. Um, I think the thing that's hard with mental health stuff is that, and we know more about it today than we did, you know, then. Like back then, you know, my mom would refer to it as like manic depression, you know, and that was what we called it. And we don't call it that today. We call it like bipolar, bipolar disorder, you know. And even then, there's like, you know, out routes of all that kind of stuff or outshoot, offshoots of that kind of stuff. But I think the thing is that with mental health, like depression and whatever, it's like when you're a family member of somebody that is going through that, on top of that, having an addiction, because a lot of people that have addiction issues have mental health issues and they're medicating that with substances. I mean, that's a pretty common thing, right? And so when you have that, it's like, as a family member of it, because I can't even remember when I was in high school and, like, you know, before my mom got sober and stuff like that, like, after I left the house, like, I was never, like, I was always sympathetic for, to my mom, like, of her, like, dealing with things, like, you know, I always thought my mom was probably, like, abused in her childhood and stuff like that and had, like, all these issues, right? But at the same time, like, I, uh, it, it's like, you're not mad at the person, you're mad at the situation, right? Like, you're not, and you can't really make sense of it. Like, you can't be mad at somebody because they're depressed. You're almost, like, mad at, like, it, you, it's like you almost kind of make, can't make sense out of it. It's like you're mad at God a little bit for making this person have these issues, right? Because you don't know what to do with it. You feel very powerless in that moment. It's scary, right? One of the reasons why I share a mixture of my mom's history of, um, you know, how it was in the bad times or how it was in the good times and that she got sober and, and you know, was in recovery um, is because, number one, I think that the truth would be important to my mom. She was somebody that was always very focused on the truth. Like, I talked about the journals that she had that says evidence on them and things like that. She would not want her story told without the whole story being told, even though she was a private person. Like, if... And, and I think knowing me talking about my sobriety on YouTube, I think that's the one thing that she would, like, that would make sense to her and she would be really proud of. That there were other people out there that were, like, impacted in any kind of way about hearing my story. I can't tell you how many mothers have come to me and shared with me, like, your story of your mother encouraged me to get sober. Like, that would mean so much to my mom. Like, my mom was really a believer in turning her wounds into wisdom and sharing her story, you know? And so it's important to share the whole story of how that all looks. And that's why I do that, you know? I also think it's important to share, and I really loved this comment that this person left me because I don't even think I think of it that way. But like, this is the thing, right? And this is why it's important that I say that I don't necessarily like, if I, if, if I just met a stranger tomorrow and somebody was like, tell me about your mom, I can tell you what I would say about her. Oh, I, my mom loved movies. She loved Trip to Bountiful and Out of Africa and To Kill a Mockingbird and we would watch movies and she loved microwave popcorn and walking and she loved music, you know? I mean, those are the things I would tell. I wouldn't say, oh, my mother was a horrible alcoholic and my childhood was just traumatic as shit. Like, that's not where I would go to with that, right? And so, but this is the thing, right? My mom got healthy. 
I think that's important. I think that that's the story that goes along with my friends who either they didn't get sober for their parents to see or their parents didn't get sober for them to see or deal with whatever the issues were. They never got any kind of resolve to that. I was able to have that, you know? My mom was able to see me get sober and I was able to see her get sober. So there was no stones left unturned. We were, we, we talked about everything we needed to talk about. That's why I'm able to do that today, right? And see my mom that way. So, you know, that's why I encourage parents today, like if you have kids, you know, like one of, like one of the things like if Tanya was sure, she'd say, my kid never saw me drunk. She'd say, I got sober before my kid ever saw me drunk. Like that's one of the things, you know? And there's a lot of friends of mine that are like that, that are like, oh no, I got, I got sober before my kids were old enough to know what was going on. Like they never saw me drunk. They will never see me drunk, right? Well, that goes into other areas as well. It doesn't just go into substance abuse. It goes into other areas of our life that if we're taking care of ourselves and we're in therapy and we're working on our health, right? Even if you're not 100%, let's say if you're 60%, like I don't want to call out certain comments or whatever that people left sharing their stories, but let's just say even if you're at 30%, I think as we grow old, and we understand people that are going through, especially our parents or family members, similar situations, the attempt to try to be healthy by being in therapy, by listening to spiritual music or to listen to other people or to try to improve our lives, like that overpowers all the other stuff, right? Like there are so many things like that every once in a while, I'll just be like, oh, I totally forgot about that. And it's like some huge thing that happened that was very negative in my life with my mother's addiction or her mental health. And I had completely forgotten about that. The reality is I remember most of the good times, but that came as a result of my mom getting healthy. And even at the end, my mom wasn't hundred percent healthy. You know, she had a lot of mental health issues at the end. She was sober, but she had a lot of mental health issues at the end, you know? But I could see her as a sick person that was trying to get better, you know, not as a bad person trying to get good, but as a sick person trying to get well. And just like this prayer, God, when a person offends me, it doesn't even necessarily offend me, all right? But help me to remember this is a sick person. This is a prayer for the sick man. So this is me seeing my mother as a sick person that's trying to get help, trying to improve her life. I can't fault her for that, you know? I can't fault anybody for that. So no, I don't look at those things. But... I think had I not gotten sober and had that perspective and my mom hadn't gotten sober, I don't know that if my mom had died, let's say at 50 from, you know, and was drunk when she died or whatever, or had been drinking or whatever, not, even if it wasn't related to that, let's just say if she had a heart attack, I think my attitude would have been very bitter and resentful. I would have been like, you know what? Like I never really had a great relationship with my mom all her life and it is what it is. And she just drank her whole life away. And she, I think that's what my attitude would be like. So you taking them outside? Yeah. Where's all the fancy dance outfits? Back then. Is it still raining out there? No. Okay, good. Yeah. It is? Oh. No. No, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> so, but thank you for leaving that comment. I really appreciate it. And you know, that's kind of like how I look at things. Like, my dad wasn't perfect. By any means, you know? But my dad did his best. You know? My mom did her best. Um... It was funny because, well, not funny, but I was listening, I was thinking about my parents the other day because I was um, watching, um, I'm going to look this up. I was looking up, oh, I, I actually bought the song. I bought the original version by James Blunt, and then I bought the version that was on American Idol by the guy that, that won last year. The song is called uh, called Monsters, and he shares that this is his audition song, and he auditions with the song because of his dad passing away. And this wasn't just about my dad, this was about my mom too, but I love these lyrics because it's about and it, this, he's talking to his father as his father's dying. He says, I'm not your son, you're not my father. We're just two grown men saying goodbye. No need to forgive, no need to forget. I know your mistakes and you know mine. And I think that's one of the things, you know, as I've gotten older, I've been able to look at people in my life and it's like, you, it's not anymore like, you did this to me, you did this to me, you ruined my life. It's like, okay, I see you as a sick person. At that time, maybe you're not today, but at that time you were, right? Well, I've been a sick person in my life. You know, my sponsor looked at me when I was talking about somebody and she said, how can you see that person any different than you would want somebody to see you when you were in your active addiction? I was like, light bulb moment, right? If I would want people to forgive me 
for the things that I did when I was in my own active addiction, you know, and sickness, and see that I'm not that person today, then I have to be willing to see that that person that's there today might be different down the road and have compassion and kindness for them. I don't want to see the bad in people. You know, I want to see the good in people and see people change. And I love that. And I love that, those lyrics and that, because with a parent especially, I think, you know, like with my mom and I, or with my dad and I, or with anybody, you know, it's like, I know your mistakes. You know mine. There's no reason to forgive or forget. Let's just, it's, it just is what it is, you know? It's a beautiful sentiment. It's all right. He's coming back in. So I'm going to get off here now. Uh, you want to say goodbye to everybody? Say bye. Hello. Hello. Um, I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Friday. And if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. And um, do a real short outro today. Just, I love you. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Love you. <laughs>